Hi, in this video, I'm going to just demonstrate on how to use OpenShift. It's a, uh, I would say, a cheaper option to deploying application uh, and hosting your applications. They've come out with the new version. If you can just see right here, uh, I have uh, my accounts. And this is the homepage for OpenShift and you can go to online starter for the new one. But uh, it just takes time to provision this up and you can start to deploy your application as containers. But for this video purpose, I'm just going to use OpenShift uh, online too. I already have an account on this and see how do we can use this as a platform, as a service. Uh, and so I just go to this login screen. Uh, these are my credentials and I just sign this up. So once you sign in, uh, it's going to take a little time, maybe, and you just, uh, you know, are onto your landing page and just tells you that, you know, you don't really have any applications created. So you can create an application and there are various, uh, you know, platforms uh, that are available, including PHP, Ruby, uh, Node.js, in fact, and we'll be doing it on Node.js. And you, you can also include your databases along with and deploy your code via uh, Git. So we're going to do all three. And let's try the first one. So I'm just going to create an application. And uh, so there are many options right here. You can, for Java, you can use JBoss application server if you want to host Java or J2E application and uh, PHP, Ruby, the, man, the many others. But we got, we're going to rely on Node.js. Uh, that's like a thing which is latest in the market. And uh, I think I'll just type in with Node.js like this. And uh, I'm just going to go down. There are many options in Node.js, but we're going to choose the latest version of Node.js. That's what Node.js latest version means. And I can just name it anything. So I can just make it uh, test. And this public URL really means the URL on which your application is going to be hosted on. If you notice here, it is an option to create a new domain. So for example, if you wanted to deploy this on www.puneet.com, then you can just choose this uh, create new domain. And in fact, you can choose this option later on as well. Any source code directory that you want to, or any source directory, git directory that you want to, uh, you know, map it to. So it will just take your git repository and deploy that piece of code. So I don't really have anything as of now. So I'm just going to go with this, uh, you know, blank option. It's an optional thing uh, anyways, because it already creates an application for you and stores it in some repository. We'll see how to do this. So I'm just going to choose this gear as small. And I think this is an important uh, thing to note make a note of because if you choose this to be you know a, a large size then your your charges will be uh, on, on the higher side so it's just charged according to the gear size itself so I'm just going to choose a small because it's just for a demonstration sake and uh, I'm just going to use here uh, the default region and uh, I'm just going to use the US East one and it's only available in US and, and Europe as well uh, the other thing to notice is if you if you're not a bronze uh, customer, so I you know if my account settings, I, I can tell you that I've just purchased this uh, OpenShift Online bronze uh, package or a plan, and that's why I see this custom domain uh, option. If you if you haven't, then you'll not see this creating a new domain as an option. You'll just be able to deploy your applications on rhcloud.com. So that's the disadvantage if you don't really have it deployed. And then I can just go ahead and create an application. This takes some time to, you know, uh, create a business and and do do everything. But uh, once once this is finished, we'll have a working Node.js application, and it's like a sample application. Uh, the source code is going to be available on a Git repository. Uh, so what we are going to do now is we're gonna use our command prompt and uh, then make use of the the commands to deploy an application. Just to tell you, you can just go down to open shift from here and uh, yeah, maybe just open shift itself. I'll just search it on Google. And meantime, you know, this is uh, getting up our application ready. So I can just go here and you can go down to the plans and pricing as well. And uh, I think this is for the new one, but I think more importantly, we can as of now, go down to the documentation uh, from here. So let me just find out. It's been some time that I've looked at this new one. So you can go to developers, I think, and you can go to getting started section. Okay. And as you go there, you can uh, do the basic setup from here itself. 
so let's see where the basic setup is going to be i think uh, I think it's going to be in basic walkthrough and this just tells you how do you create an application node application and and, and deploy it uh, you know on the OpenShift platform so this is how do you create it we are just following the same process uh, here again but uh, on the setup part let me just go to developer guide and uh, Okay, I'm going to search for installation. Let's see if it gives us anything. And uh, meantime, our application has got deployed. So, I mean, everything is done. It has put our source code into this directory. I mean, in, in this Git repository. I can clone this and add certain changes to it and deploy it back again. So, that's what needs to be done. Now, I'll just uh, continue with the overview page because this is already done. I understand this is done. Let's see what our application is and how it looks like. So it now looks like something like this. So it'll give us a URL that we chose. And if I just click on this URL, you notice this is our application which has got deployed on this particular URL. Now, how has this happened by the way? So this is our source code which is present right here. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to clone this. And let me just go to the command prompt. And I'll uh, go to website and uh, let's just create a new directory. Uh, so open shift test maybe. And I'll just log into this directory. And there's nothing right here. And I'm just typing git clone and the SSH URL. So moment this happens and you have got the uh, setup done on your machine, you should be able to fetch the things from here and you know, uh, get the code right over here. So if I just do ls, now test is an application. I can just go to cd test and open this in code editor. Okay, so this is the application. And I think uh, if you already know a little bit of Node.js, then I think this is my index HTML page. So as of now, it says title, custom Node.js, outreach, cartridge for OpenShift and that's what the title should be on the application page. So if you notice, uh, you know, on the application itself, not here, but when you click on this, then this title should come as custom Node.js cartridge for OpenShift. So I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to just type in my own title and save this. Now, if I have to just make these changes back again, I'll just use the git commands again. So just type in git add all and git status, which means what are the files that have changed. And so git commit, this is my first commit. And the only one file has changed and I'm just going to type in git push. So git push is automatically going to upload this file changes to the repository and also start up your server again. So restart your server. So you notice already it says stopping the Node.js application. So it's already stopping the application and getting it restarted with your changes that you've posted right now. So you don't really need to do anything actually. Uh, just that you need to have a local copy of uh, your source code and you can deploy it again and get it started back again. So it's just going to start, it's going to take a while. Meantime, I'll just take you to the setup uh, instructions. So setup instructions are something like this. Uh, so there is a command line tools that comes with, uh, you know, OpenShift, but we are just focusing mainly on OpenShift 2 right now. So I'm just going to set up, say, RHC setup. You can search for this RHC setup on OpenShift, and I think you're going to get it. Okay, so it says installing client tools and OpenShift. And this is where I wanted you to be. So I'm on Mac and you can choose, for example, your operating system. I'll just show it for Windows. So, you know, for this, you'll need to install Ruby, first of all, any latest version, Git on your machine, and then you can, uh, you know, install uh, the, the other. So once Ruby is and Git is installed, you can just check their installations. Then you need to do something like this. 
you need to run a command rhc setup and it will prompt you for your username password for the first time when you do it it's going to generate a token and then you'll have you know all the rhc commands running on your applications once this is done you should be able to do most of the things here for example uh, you can remotely log into your application for example if i just click right now so it's rhc ssh and let me just show you there is a link here as well when you want to log in it says ssh this is my application name and because of the certificate already it's not going to even prompt me for a username or password so let me just try this i know our application is already deployed uh, meantime but i'll just show you how to log into ssh and it's really easy i mean once you set up the whole thing then you now this is a remote machine that i'm logged into you notice test punit 06 rhc cloud this is the same as my uh, url right here on which the application is deployed and i'll just refresh this so you notice my own title has come up here the application has changed this is how easily you can do it and now i can just find out on the remote location you know the trees and the application is my my code my code is deployed so usually it happens in the app root folder you can just type in cd app root you can just work on this you know remote machine as if it's just your uh, local machine now and then just type in ls and you can just go into the logs directory and see any failures that has happened so this is the node.js logs i'm just going to type in tlf so it's just given me the last uh, 200 lines uh, from here and it just says the application started there's no errors uh, fortunately for us so i can control c and exit out of the remote machine so RHC setup is really important before you run all these commands and I think there is some commands on RHC list that can give you the list of applications that are deployed in your application and uh, so, so, so there are other commands you can just you know take a take a look yourself I'm not sure by the way this is a command because you need to just type in server list not uh, what I did so you can escape and maybe control C and come out of this escape colon q and uh, let me just try server list sorry it's rhc server list so you notice the applications that are deployed and it just tells you know uh, issue the list of servers as of now there's only one so it just gives me this so you can run many other commands with rhc you can just learn it from uh, the documentation itself which is right here uh, and for Windows users, you can, you can do it from here. And there's a whole set of uh, instructions that you can look in for different operating systems and you know learn about this a little more. So that's how you can easily deploy applications to Node.js. Just the last thing uh, that I wanted to update you with is just in case you wanted to attach a database with this application, then you can just create any database. For example, Node.js typically go along well with MongoDB. So I'm just going to add a MongoDB cartridge and uh, add a cartridge remember everything is going to be charged so do it with caution and uh, once this is done it will publish me the the credentials for database and that i can use in my application configuration file maybe to connect to the database so that's how you are going to use openshift and uh, thank you for watching this video if you like it then don't forget to uh, press the like on youtube thank you so much for watching